Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Come on, let's get up and get ready. It's prayer time. Thank you for joining me this morning in prayer. Come on, hit the share button and invite someone to come on and be in prayer with us this morning. Come on in, waiting for a few of you to get on and we'll get started in prayer today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us in prayer. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on, let's get ready to pray. Come on. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. Good morning, Shy. Good morning. Morning, Sister Pat. <clears throat> Hope you're feeling better today. Hope you're stronger and doing well. Thank God for you this morning. Good morning, Sister Patty. Thank you all for getting on. Good morning, Rose. Good morning. Good to have you up with us, Rose, this morning. Good to have you here. Carla, good morning. Minister Lane, good morning. Dr. Galloway, good morning. Thank you all for getting up and joining me in prayer this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Joanne and Shayla. Good morning. Glad you all are up and ready for prayer. I've got some nuggets for you. Got some little nuggets. I've been reading about Goshen all week. I've been really looking at what Goshen means to the body of Christ. So I want to pray that over you today after I give you these few nuggets. Good morning, Ivor. Good morning, Minister Elaine, Sister Pat. Good morning. Good to have all of you up. Thank you all for joining us in prayer this morning. Elder Lynn, thank you for getting up. So good to be in prayer. Hit that share button. Share the prayer time with someone. Marquita, good morning. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. He is so good, so kind, and we thank God for that this morning. Thank you all for getting up with us. Morning, Pastor Shirley. My, 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 good, good to see all of you. Good to have you all here. God is good. God is kind. He is merciful. Dr. Alicia, good morning. Good morning, good morning. I want my books. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, everyone, for getting up. Candice, good morning. Janella, good morning. Pastor Shirley, good morning. Thank you all for getting up and being with us this morning. Sister Tony, good morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My goodness, my goodness. Good to see all of you up. It's a little bit rainy here in Pittsburgh this morning, but it's supposed to clear up. But listen, hope you got a little notebook with you. I want to give you this information on Goshen because I want you to come on. I want you to pray that over your house. The Bible said God will give us the desires of our heart. And all week I've been camping out in Goshen. And I want to tell you what Goshen means to us as born again believers as we get ready to pray this over our lives. It's just so important that we understand what God is saying to us in this season. Morning, Sister Kim. Sister Marie Davis, Elder Barb, good morning. Uh, Dr. Coleman, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all. Happy anniversary, Dr. Coleman. These 19 years of serving God's people. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My goodness, all of you. Kim, Nicole, good morning. We're going to get ready to pray. But listen, I want you to get a paper. I got some nuggets. I want you to get these scriptures and put them somewhere so that you can um, have them. Go back and look them up for yourself. It's a place called Goshen. G-O-S-H-E-N. I've been in it this week, just camping out in it. And I want to, to just give it to you like the Lord gave it to me. Just a few nuggets, that's all. And then we're going to pray this prayer that God will cause us in this season to live our lives, to live our latter days in Goshen. A place of productivity. I thank God for that this morning. My God, thank you, Bishop, for getting up. Thank you all for getting up with us. Listen, we're going to get started. I want to give you these nuggets before I start praying. All this week, God has been laying it on my heart about Goshen. This is the, that's all I got. That was the one word I got, Goshen. And I started looking it up. I started going and it's Genesis chapter 45 and verse 10. And he says, and he says, and you shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds. And I will provide for you and your household. And this is just showing us how important it is 
for us to get to Goshen. Goshen was the best of the land. When you look up Goshen, when Joseph got to Egypt after 22 years of the battle of, of being rejected and of going through all of these tests, Joseph gets to Egypt and he's now the, the greatest administrator. He's one of the top, well, he is the top dog in Egypt at the time. But what is so important is when Joseph's family comes to Egypt and finds him, Joseph didn't give them the worst. He wasn't angry with them. Joseph gave them the best of the land. Pharaoh approved it. And Goshen was the best of the land. It was designated to Joseph's family. The, it says the soil was rich. It was good for livestock. It's the place where God lets Joseph's family rest while they were in Egypt. When you study it, the Egyptians did not like herders. They did not like shepherds. They didn't even eat with them. Then that the Egyptians never ate with the shepherds, but the shepherds, Joseph family were shepherds and they were given the land of Goshen. Now, according to Genesis 26 and 9, Je Je um, Goshen was a place of restoration. If you study it, Goshen was the place where Joseph went and met his father. And after 22 years, instead of grief and isolation and sadness, he was able to hug his father. It was a place of restoration. It was a place um, of manifestation because this was the dream of manifestation now in Goshen that Gen he had back in Genesis 37, where you see he had the dream that his family would bow down to him. And now here is the manifestation of the dream. Now you see in Goshen, restoration, manifestation, the healing of the family, the best of the land, that everything that ever just came to place in Goshen. And that's what God kept telling me to pray over you today is that you're getting ready to go into a season of the best of God. The things that you have 22 years, it took for Joseph to get to this place of Goshen where there was restoration with his dad, restoration with his brothers. He was living his best life. And that's what God wants. There's a remnant of people that God wants to live their best life. And, and, and when you look at this, you're going to see how God is so mindful to take care of his own. He's so careful to take care of his own. I got so excited this week when God showed me. I know people are complaining about the gas prices. They're complaining about inflation. They're complaining about COVID. They're complaining about a lot of things happening. But if you hear, if you really keep your ear tuned to the heartbeat of God, you're going to realize for the body of Christ that serves God in obedience, it's going going to be your best season, best life. These next seven years, these next years ahead of us, God is showing us if we could just get this together, he is going to take us into these seven years of plenty, seven years of increase, seven years, but we've got to walk in obedience to God. People say favor is not fear, but I believe favor comes out of obedience of God. And God has a timing where God chooses to bless the remnant. He's always looking for that remnant to bless and to increase and to and make a blessing. And I want you to know that as I was laying before him this week regarding this Goshen, God said, I want you to pray that over the people because they are getting ready to walk into a season of amazing manifestation. It was the time when Joseph family got to see the manifest, the very thing that they used to wanted to destroy him with, the very thing that they wanted to kill him over. You see what I'm talking about? The very thing that people hate you for, the office that you carry, the anointing that you carry, the blessings that you carry, they hate you for it. But you didn't ask for it. God chose to bless you. And now is your season where God is about to increase you. They haven't even seen anything. They're mad at what you have. And they're mad at what you're doing. But that wasn't even it. That was not it. That was just, you know, and you go to the, the restaurant. They give you hors d'oeuvres. They give you something light in the beginning. That's not the main course. And what people don't realize, you're angry. If you're that angry over the initial meal. What you're going to do when the main course come? What you're going to do now when God is about to show himself strong? Because God normally likes to work when there's a crisis, when there is um, the inflation's here, gas prices are up, finances are tight, people are going through. 
If you study the word of God, that's when he works his best. That's when he likes to show himself strong. That's when he likes to show up because then it's not you. It's not you. It's him showing you, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. You know, when I, or somebody told me the other day, they went to the gas pump and the gas price was so high. And my response, man, I'm so glad we have gas. I have no complaints over the gas. I have no complaints over inflation because God knew inflation was coming. But then God turns to me and tell my people, you you will live in Goshen. You will live in the best. You will have the best. You will be taken care of. You will have everything that you need. And he didn't stop there. Even when the children of Israel was departing to go uh, to the promised land, guess what God said in Exodus? God says, do not allow the hail, do not allow the swarms of uh, insects to touch Goshen. Even when God was chastising Egypt, God never allowed the people in Goshen to struggle with the children in Egypt. Do you see that? You've got to get this. You can't, you cannot be complaining. This is not a time to complain. Do not join the world in complaining because of inflation. Do not join the world complaining because food prices are high. Didn't you know the same thing was happening in Egypt? They couldn't find food. Things were high. Inflation was high. They couldn't get anything. But God had already set someone in place. God had already put some, God knew inflation was coming. You think our God is a bobo? Our God is amazing. He's awesome. He's wonderful. He's a mighty God. He knew inflation was coming. He knew the state of America. He knew we wouldn't obey him. He knew who was going to be in government. He knew all that. So stop acting like God, God messed up or he forgot. God is not a man that he should lie and God don't forget. And he never forgets his own. I've got to get you to see this. God do not forget his people. He says right here, even in Exodus 9, God, in Exodus 8, God said, I will not send the swarms of flies. I will not send hail on my people that live in Goshen. Look at divine protection. Frogs eating up the land. Swarms of things eaten up the land, but God put a divine protection around Goshen and everyone that was in Goshen was saved. They were protected even from the, the correction of God. There's a remnant of people that God is going to cause to step into a season and years of Goshen. The next seven years is very critical to the body of Christ. I want you to hear me. The next seven years is very, very critical because it's going to get worse. But what you have to remember is who you serve, the God that you serve. And God will cause you to prosper even in the midst of uh, inflation, in the midst of gas prices, in the midst of food going up. He's going to give you wisdom to get gain. He's going to tell you when to stock up on food. He's going to tell, he will do that. He is just that kind of God. Even in Genesis chapter 26, when God shows us there, in the time of famine, he protected his own again. God told Isaac exactly what to do. Don't go down to Egypt. Stay right here. And, and right there, God blessed him. And what Isaac did, he sowed a seed in that same year. And what you know why he did that? That was a faith move. That he would always have a harvest. Because you see, there's never a harvest without a seed. People want a harvest, but they don't want to put no seed in the ground. This is one way you protect your harvest because the only voice a harvest ever responds to is that of a seed. So I want you to understand fully, we are going into a season that's going to blow the mind of many people, even other Christians that don't understand about the remnant of God, the blessings of God, the increase of God. There are people that are complaining about the gas, the food, anything they can complain about, they're complaining. This is not the time to complain body of Christ. This is not the time. God is not a man that he can lie. He knows about the inflation. He knows about the gas prices. He knows about the war, the war in, in, in Ukraine. He knows, he knows everything. He does not miss a beat. But what he told me to tell you, my people shall live in Goshen. Now, let's see what that means for today. That means... In the land of Goshen, you are going to still have the best in the midst of a crisis. He's going to supply every need for you. God has already put people in place to supply every need that you need. So there's no need complaining about it. There's no need fussing about it. It's taken care of. The only thing he demands of us is that we walk in obedience to his word. This is not a season to be caught in sin and lying and jucking and jiving. You want the best of God, you got to give God the best of you. He wants the best of 
you for the best of him. So whatever, whatever God gets ready to bless, that's why people get frustrated when other Christians are being blessed, but they don't know the price you paid for walking in the blessings of God. And I believe in my heart for the next seven years, we're going to see the people of God will live in Goshen. You're going to see a remnant of people that are raised up to live in the blessings of God because of the obedience of God. When you walk in obedience to God, you have the favor of God, you have the increase of God, you have the multiplication of God, you have the redemptive power of God, you have the blessings of God overtaking you. I want you to understand you're in a season of manifestation. It took David almost, um, Joseph, 22 years to get to this place. You have paid the price. Some of you have been paying the price a long time. You have walked through isolation, betrayal, lies, failure, mess up, whatever it is you walk through in these last 22 years, I want you to understand as I get ready to pray today that you're coming to the end of that season of your life and you're walking into the season of Goshen. I want you to write that in your journal, put it somewhere in your house. I'm living in Goshen. That's where I'm moving to. I've changed my address. My God, let me help somebody get delivered this morning. I have moved to a place called Goshen. You first got to see it, you got to embrace it, and you got to ready to walk into it. It's called Goshen. Look it up. Read it yourself. Go to Genesis 45, Genesis 46, 29, Genesis 45, 10, Exodus chapter 9, 26. Go look it up. Exodus 8, 20, 25, I believe it is. Look it up, and you will see how God protected Goshen even when there was a crisis in the land. How God gave his people the best of the land even when there was a famine in the land. There was no food, but they were well protected because God already put Joseph in place. So they had an administrator. So food would get to them. They would never lack or anything. Look at what God brought you through COVID. You survived COVID. You wasn't hungry. God protected your family during COVID. Do you think God protected your family just for nothing? When you walk in obedience to God, when God has a plan for your life, you've got to say over your life, I am moving to Goshen. That's where God has called me to live in these next years of my life. I'm moving to Goshen, a place called Goshen. Read it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. But this week I was shut in with the Lord and that's the word he gave me. One word, Goshen. So I went, started looking for it, researching it. God, what are you saying? And he said to me, as you pray today, that my people would have revelation knowledge that I have a place prepared for them. I have a lifestyle prepared. You see, there was a season in the body of Christ where people believe the more the more uh, holier you look, the more um, poor you look, is that you are a Christian and you're deep. That is not true. The more deep you look on now, the more, the more you prosper in God. You should be vibrant and excited about life, not, not looking down and poor and, you know, oily and like, no, and, you know, no, that's not God. God wants us to live our best life. And it's not only inside, but outside. And he wants us to walk in the blessings of God, the increase of God, the multiplication of God. And he He wants us to live our best life. If you survived COVID, if you come through that, that was another season of testing for you. But I hear God say to tell my people that I want you to begin, write it somewhere, over your business, over your house, over your, your car, wherever you want to put that right now. I live in Goshen. I'm living in Goshen. The rest of my life is going to be the best of my life because I've changed my address. God has given me permission to move to Goshen. I want you to get this. And because Goshen is the best of the land, Goshen is where uh, manifestation of the fulfillment of that word that was given to Joseph when he hugged his father around the neck. Joseph went right there to hug his father and, and tell Tell him who he was. I'm not dead. You know, some people think you're dead because they don't, you know, you're not in their life anymore that you're just going to lay down and die. No, I'm not dying. Sorry to have fooled you. You can cancel the funeral. I am going to live in Goshen and I'm getting ready to live my best life because God has said in this season and when you have a word from the Lord, can nobody take it from you? Can nobody stop you from it? I want you to get this. You know, I don't care whether they like you or they don't like you. They left you. They walk away. They abandon you. The reason that you had to go because you could 
couldn't go to Goshen with me. You could not live in Goshen with me. Goshen was God's idea for me and I am going to live in Goshen. I have changed my address and the next season of my life, I'm living in Goshen. I'm going to pray it over you today. It's going to be manifested. And, and I want, I'm going to give you about five things what Goshen means. Goshen means right then restoration. I'm going to give it to you real quick before we start a place. This is what we're going to pray. God is restoring. He had lost his family. Joseph's family had abandoned him. They had betrayed him. Restoration right now is it. God is restoring you, number one. God is restoring not just your health, but your family relationships that were one breached. God is restoring them. Number two, God gave them the best. You are about to walk in the best season of your life. God is giving you the best of what he has to offer. God is cloaking you in favor, causing you to walk. Come on. God is giving you divine connection. Another thing about Goshen is divine connection. Pharaoh approved Joseph's family to have the best of the land. So God is connect. God connected him with Pharaoh so that his family could be blessed. Although all the things he went through, God got him divine connection. There's some people that God is going to connect you with in this season that are going to open doors. Listen, you're one connection away from a major breakthrough. There's people that God's going to connect you with that know your value, that want you to see you with the best. And I want you to know God has already prepared them. He's already sent them along the way for you. So get ready for your divine connection. So restoration the best that God has, divine connection is what God has for you. And it has for divine protection. I want you to see that. When the plagues hit Egypt, the Bible says God told them, do not allow the swarms. Listen, the swarms will not touch Goshen. The flies will not touch Goshen. God said, no, none of that is going to divine. You are under God's divine protection in this time. And I don't care what you see at the gas pump. I don't want you to complaining when everybody start talking about, girl, I'm being held up at the gas tank. You know what you say? I'm so glad there is a gas tank. I am so glad I can go get my gas. I'm so glad I can pay for my gas. And God is going to provide every need that I have. I'll never lack and want for anything because I live in Goshen. When you testify about God, he got to show up on your behalf. He's got to show up, whether there's sickness, whether there's disease, whatever it is that is coming against you, that's fighting against you. I want you to know God is going to do divine healing. There is healing that's coming to you in your body. Something that you've been diagnosed with, something you've been battling with, you are coming under this divine protection and healing of God. Study it for yourself. Don't just take my word. You get your dictionary out, your Bible out, and you say, God, I've moved my address. I will live the rest of my life in Goshen. I am going to live under the, the, the spirit of Goshen in my life, in my business, and everything I do will prosper. Everything that, listen, those men of God lived in Goshen. The Bible said their flocks increase. Everything they touched increase. Their business increase. Everything they needed increased, even in a time of famine. And Joseph had enough to take care of them for the rest of their life while they were there. If you study, they did nothing change until after, after Joseph died. After he died, even when the plagues came, God made sure Goshen was protected. I want you to understand something right now. God is going to give this to you. Restoration, the best of the best, divine connection, protection, healing is coming to your season. This is your season. Declare it over your life. And listen, those of you that came on late, come on later on, go back and listen to it because I want you to get the notes on Goshen because I need to get ready to pray. But Goshen is a place and a spirit that you want over your life in this season. God is a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a divine connector. He's a divine protector. He, the Bible says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. God wants you to live. But everything... In the kingdom of God moves in seasons. I want you to get this. Everything in the kingdom of God move in seasons. And when it's your season, can no devil in hell, can no person, no look, no, no gossip, nothing can keep you from your season of Goshen. It is yours. It was declared by God. It was protected by God for you. You have gone through hell. You have been in the same way with Joseph. Took him 22 years for him to get to this place of restoration. And there's many of you who have over the last 10 years, 15 years, gone through betrayal. 
gone through divorce, gone through lies, gone through church politics, gone through backbiting, God, whatever it is, lies, whatever it is, just so many different things that you have been tested with. Some of it you have never told anyone. Some of your health is being tested. It just looked like one thing after another, a season of sequential testings. But I came to tell somebody this morning, in Goshen, there will be a season of sequential blessings. There will be a breakthrough for God. There'll be a manifestation for God. You've got to declare it over your life. You've got to write it in your journal, put it in your bath, and put it somewhere in your house. My new address is Goshen and you must know what Goshen means. It means re restoration, redemption, the best of the best, divine connection, divine protection and divine healing. Um, listen, write Goshen somewhere that you don't forget because over the next seven years, you're going to have to look at it again. You're going to have to go through it. I can't do the whole teaching on it. I'm going to do that later on, but I wanted to pray that over because we're already in the half of the year. Listen, in six months, it's going to be 2023. I want you to get this. In six months, it's going to be 2023. You cannot come out of 2022 dragging. You cannot. You've got to end this year strong. However, you end something is how you begin something else. And so I want you to understand as I'm, I'm, I'm digging deeper into Goshen, I want you to put that somewhere over your business, over your, over your, um, your, in your journal, at your house, somewhere where you can see it on your refrigerator. My new address is Goshen. A place of restoration, a place of the best of the best, a place of God's divine protection. In Goshen, I increase, flocks increase, everything multiplied, divine protection, the food they needed, it was already there. God is going to use this time to refresh you. God is going to use this time to renew you. Listen, speak it over your life. I, I came to tell somebody, this is one I got to tell you, you're going to smile again. Mm. God said to tell you, I'm going to make you laugh again. I'm going to give you your laugh back. Not that, you know, not that quiet laugh, but that ugly laugh, that laugh that makes you know, my God, this is only God. This is only God. Only God could do this. Only God could open this door. Only God could let me live like this. It's only God. It's not my education. It's not me being smart. It's just God. He just loved me so much that he moved me from where I am to live in Goshen. He took me. He took the children of Israel from there and brought them to Goshen because there was a famine in the land and God promises he's going to take care of you even in the time of famine. Isn't that amazing? He did it in Genesis 26 to Isaac. He, he told him, stay here in Gerah because here is where I'm going to bless you. I, I, move from there. Come here. Stay here. Listen for God's timing in your life. Listen, God is a God of timing. God is a God of amazing. And it may look like the last few months have been intense. People are dying. Things are happening. This is happening. This is just the prerequisite. Things happen before God does his major move. And so every time someone kept saying to me that the gas prices, the food prices, are, are this and that and the other, I'm like, uh-huh. Thank God. He's, he's my keeper. He's my provider. I will never lack and want for nothing. I filled up one of the cars and it was like 80 something dollars. And it's not, I was like, oh God, thank you that I had it to pay. Listen, don't let nothing that's happening in the world infiltrate your heart to doubt God. God wants to be reverent. God wants to show himself strong in the earth. God wants to show all these people that don't believe there's a God, all these atheists that don't believe there's a God. He wants to use you to show them off that God's timing is impeccable and that when he blesses someone, he has it at the right time, the right place, the right moment in time. I want you to get this. I don't care what the enemy has done or said, I don't care what it looked like for you in the last three, four years. It, I don't matter what you've been through. It was 22 years before David's, before Joseph's family could come to Goshen and enjoy this life. So those of you who thought, oh my gosh, it's been such a long time. God's timing is impossible. Impeccable. He knows exactly when to send what you need. Right when you get to the place of throwing in the towel, don't look like it's going to happen for me. That's when God moves his best. So I want you to hold on to this as I get ready to pray these seven things over you that happens in Goshen that you can receive them. 
You'll be able to walk in them and you'll be able to see the hand of God. I want you to understand this. I'm going to do more, more, finish more studies on Goshen because I'm going to probably preach it the next couple of weeks because I really believe I've got to get people to get it. I've got to get people to get it. I prophetically, it's a word that God is saying. We got to embrace it. We got to get it. It's God's timing. If you dismiss it, if you ignore it, you don't embrace it. You're like, well, I've been through so much and nothing's changed. That's the same way the people of, of God wants to respond is that nothing's changed. We'll see God's timing. If you look at the scripture all over the Bible, Genesis 26, Genesis 45, Genesis 37, you see the hand of God moving his people into different places for such a time as this. Book of, a book of Esther, such a time as this. God has been moving you like a chess piece on, on a game thing, getting you in the right place at the right time for the blessings of God. God's blessing is connected to the obedience of God. You did not waver. You did not back down. You were talked about. You were lied on. You were mistreated. But yet still, you held your course so that you could get to the place of this season. And when God releases it, and that's what God says, I'm releasing that spirit over the prayer warriors today. And every one of you can claim it. Every one of you can write it somewhere. And every time you think about what, what's happening, you have to remember, I live in Goshen. I live on the, the amazing blessings of God. I will lack for nothing, my God. I will live the best. So let's get ready to pray that right now. I want you to hold on to that. Write it in your journal that I have moved to Goshen. I have everything, me and my business, my children, I little repacked up. They left Israel and they moved to Goshen. I'm telling you right now, all this week, that's all I kept saying to God. I'm packing up me, my babies, my church, my business. We're going on the, the spirit of Goshen. We live in Goshen and we are going to see the productivity, the building, the increase, the multiplication of Goshen. So I thank God for that this morning. If you, if you weren't here at the beginning, you need to go back and listen to this for the beginning because I want you to get and understand what Goshen means to you. What Goshen means. It's not for everybody. It is. Yes, Dr. Galloway, it is. It's the right place at the right time when God decides. It, everybody's not on this morning. Everybody wasn't a priority to be on this morning. But for those of you who want to share it with someone, tell them, listen, you got to get on to this. You got, it's like an umbrella and it's raining. You got to get on to this. You got to get this and hold on to this because I picked up my business. I picked up my church. I picked up my home, my children and my grandchildren up to the fourth generation and we're moving to Goshen. When you study it, he took his whole family to Goshen and everything they touched was blessed. Increase began to happen. Multiplication began to happen. They were blessed, living a blessed life and living under divine protection. You may not want it, but I got it. I have made a decision this week. God, I don't know why you shut me in like this, but I know without a shadow of a doubt when I hear the voice of God and I heard God say, I want you to pray this. So let's go. Father, I thank you this morning for the prayer warriors that are up. I thank you this morning for your divine protection. I thank you for your love. I command, Lord God, this is an awesome day, an awesome time, a time of revelation, knowledge, a time of wisdom, Lord God. Father, you have even dropped it in the spirits of those that are here this morning. They felt something was about to break. They knew something was about to happen. They weren't sure what it is, but they knew you were up to something, Lord God. You have been speaking to them. You have been revealing to them, and they've been saying, I hear a sound. I hear ever since Pentecost, I've heard a sound. I knew something was coming out after Pentecost, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what God was up to. I didn't know what God was doing after Pentecost, but I knew after Pentecost, there was going to be a shift in. I knew there was going to be a move of God. I knew something. I knew God was up to something after my God, my God, you better get this this morning. I knew that God was up to something after Pentecost and no weapon, no devil, no one can stop this move of God. Father, for those of us that came together, those of us that prayed, those of us that spent time with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that after Pentecost, there was a great and mighty rushing wind. There was a sound of change. And God, I heard you this morning saying, there is a sound of change. Pentecost shifted. Pentecost caused a sound of change in the body of Christ. And those of know them know their God will do great exploits. I heard God say,
says, get ready for the seven years of change, the seven, seven years of living in Goshen. You shall move to Goshen, you and your household, and God will increase you more and more and more in the name of Jesus. And for those of you that have been expectant, you felt like something was about to happen. I don't know. Some of you already started to give birth to something new. Some of you are about to give birth to something new. Some of you are about to step into a major, major promotion, change, increase, business, adventures, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, there's somebody that God wants to do a miracle in your life. You have been battling in your body, but I heard God said, I'm bringing you to that place of healing, that place of restoration. These these demons, you'll fight no more. These spirits, you'll fight no more. My God, my God, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of oppression, depression, sickness, and disease, I command you to go in the name of Jesus, and I command your people to live and be productive and increase. I thank you for the redemptive blood of God. I thank you, Lord God, that in Goshen, God, you redeemed us, God. My God, my God, you redeemed our life. You restored us. You restored the 22 years years that were stolen from us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that when you give back, you multiply, you increase, you triple, you give 1,000 fold in return. So God, I thank you for restoration, restoration of family, restoration of dreams, restoration of business, restoration of houses and land. God, I call forth restoration in the name of Jesus, God. I call it now that each and every person on this prayer family this morning will pick up their family and move to Goshen. God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I remember when the movie Tawanda came out and everybody was going there and wanting to move there. But I'm telling you, Goshen is the place to go. Goshen is where God supernaturally takes care of his own. My God, it is real. It's not a game. It's not a play. It's not a thought. It's the word of God. God says right now that he is telling his people to get to that place, to embrace that place, to pray it over your family because it's real. It's not magic. It's not a thought. It's the word of God that when you get to Goshen, when you believe in Goshen, when you stand and pray that over your life, it literally shifts your life and sends you into a new arena of health, wealth, and performance of God. I thank you today, God. It restores families. It brings family, brings healing to the family. It brings healing to things that were broken, things that were broken down. God said, I'll call you to be a repairer of the breach. I'll call you to restore the things that were once torn down. I'll call you to revive cities. I'll call you to evangelize nations. I will call you to a new place of restoration. And God said, you will live in the best of their best. God said, the best of the best belong to my people. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. On the Goshen, you will live the abundant life. You will live the best life. You will never lack and want for anything. Inflation will not destroy you. High prices will not destroy you. God is divinely protect you. He'll make a way. He'll increase. He'll send a promotion. God will do it. God said, I'll tell you when to stock up. I'll tell you when to put away. I'll tell you what to do that you will never lack a want for anything. My God, my God, I thank you, Lord God. Oh God, I thank you. Yesterday, the Lord said to me, I want you to stock up on some things, put some things away. I said, I want you to do that because they're going up in prices. And I went and I said, God, I thank you. And I began to put things away and I said, God, I hear you. He said, they're going up in prices, but when the price go up, you won't be going up with it. Listening for the voice of God for divine healing, protection, and wisdom. Wisdom. God is speaking to those who have a voice to hear him. You've got to hear him right now. Listen for the voice of God and restoration will come up to the fourth generation. You and your children's children. God said in the book of Exodus, not only is he blessing you, but up to the fourth generation, God is protecting you, your children, your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren. There is a divine protection that God is placing. And God says divine connection. Just as God connected Joseph 
to the Pharaoh so that there would be food and he would be the number one in command. God is going to divinely connect you to people that can bless you, increase you, help you. The wealth of the wicked is being transferred over to the just. And the only how you can get that wealth is through divine connection. So God said, I'm allowing you to connect to some people that will invest in what you're about to do, invest in the things that you need to do. God said, I am going to bring divine connection. Do not be afraid. My God, my God, because we as church people don't want to be around certain people. But some of these people are going to be the biggest givers into your dream and into your vision. God is going to send people to write the check for your community center, for your church, for your business, but you've got to connect with the people that he's telling you. They have the wealth. God says, listen to my voice and no other voice would you listen to. I am divinely connecting you with people that are literally going to change the trajectory of your life. They are going to change the way you go forward. They are going to change the way you accomplish the things ahead of you. This is a divine connection time. God says, I'm doing it. You don't have to push, pull, shove. I am doing it. I am connecting you with that which I have for you. You are going to see the glory of God upon your ministry, upon your life, upon everything connected to you. God says it's going to be a divine connection. When Pharaoh and Joseph connected and they got their house, how did he get there? He was in prison. He was going through one of the most hardest times of his life. He was being tested. You are being tested in your body, tested on your job, tested in your finance, tested in relationships, tested in school, tested, just being tested. He was being tested. And the baker and the butcher, remember, they even forgot him. But at the appointed time, my God, at the appointed time, at the appointed time, time. The word went to Pharaoh. There was a man down there that can interpret your dreams. Divine connection. God is going to connect you divinely in this season of Goshen that you will be able to accomplish things that you could never have accomplished on your own. My God, I want you to get this. I want you to, I got too excited this week. I love when God sends a word, a life-changing word that says to us, when God gave me this Saturday prayer, I thought this was just going to be during COVID that I was just going to pray for people to help strengthen them through in COVID. It's over a year now that we're praying, over a year. And every Saturday, I ask God, what am I praying for? I don't just want to get up and pray. What am I praying for? What is this about? And this week, I was scheduled to travel and everything just shifted in minutes. And God says, shut down, come in. I want you to talk about Goshen. I want you to find out about Goshen. And when I started looking at what Goshen, and I've heard of Goshen and I've talked about it, but something hit my belly. Something hit me this week with Goshen. I'm hoping it's hitting you this morning. Something hit me this week about Goshen. I remember saying it to Prophet. I remember talking to a few. I said, something about Goshen is not letting me go. I said, I've heard it before. I've spoken about it before. But this one, this thing is resonating in my spirit. Every time I go sit down, I'm writing something on it. I started looking it up. I started finding up more. About it. it would not let me go. Divine connection. Look at how that connection came. Don't be upset of how God is going to connect you with people in this season that is going to run. He's going to lay it on their heart to help you accomplish the kingdom of God goals that you have. When you do your business according to the kingdom of God, you will lack for nothing. Divine protection and divine help is on the way. You got to declare it. You got to write it. I want you to write it on your refrigerator, put it somewhere in your car, maybe at your desk. I have moved to Goshen. I live in Goshen. Goshen is a place of restoration, increase the best of the best that God has and divine connection. And another one, divine protection. 
It's divine. You don't have to be fearful of dying. Fear of this, fear of that, fear. Let that spirit of fear go. God says, I'll divinely protect you. When the children of Egypt was being tormented by frogs, flies, hail, all of this stuff, God said, but not Goshen. Protect Goshen. Do not let any. Could you imagine? I want you to see this. The whole nation. If you ever been driving and you look up in the sky and one part of the city is dark, dark, like the rain is about ready to pour. And you look across the, the other part and you see it's clear. There's no, there's no, no, no clouds. There's no storm. There's nothing. That's how God is divinely protecting your house. Is that no matter what's happening here. When you hit that address because of the blood of Jesus over that house, can nothing infiltrate, can nothing. That's why you don't have to live in fear. Divine protection is connected to the obedience of God in your car, on a plane, on a train, on a cruise, wherever you find yourself. Divine protection is a part of Goshen. God divinely said, and you can go read it. Go to Exodus. Go to Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter Chapter 8, and look at how God said, don't allow the hail, don't allow the swarm of flies to come near Goshen. So can you imagine the children of Israel are watching this thing that over here, all the flies is tearing it up. All the things are over here. Over here is clear. Nothing's happening over there. That's why people get mad at you when they see in spite of all that's going on, you still live where you live. You drive what you drive. You're still eating out. You're still living because of God's divine protection over your money. When you're a tither, when you got seed in the ground, there's nothing. The Bible shows you there's divine protection when you walk in obedience to the word of God. It makes people mad. They can get mad all they want, but this is so important. Look at it, Exodus 9. Look at it, Exodus 8. When I tell you something, I want you to go. I back it up with the word. I don't believe in prophets prophesying what they think, what they feel. It's got to line up with the word of God. And when God gave me this, God said to tell you that you're going to walk in divine protection and in in divine healing. And it was amazing to watch how God restored Joseph's family and his father lived to be an old age to be able to get to Goshen and live out their lives in Goshen. God wants his people to live out these lives, these next years and prosper in Goshen because you have declared it. You see, you, the word never works till you work it. You have got to work the word. You have got to work it. I want you to get this. You have got, when you get the word of God and you walk in obedience to the word, you can say, God, I'm a tither. I'm, I, I give my offering. God, I sow seed. I got seed in the ground. So I'm taking hold of this word that's spoken today that I have moved to Goshen. I will live on to the blessings of Goshen for the rest of my life. I don't care what message was preached about it before, but today is when it hits my belly and today I'm walking in the timing of God, the blessing of God. So right now in the name of Jesus, I'm taking my family, my business, my ministry, my, my, my finance, my banking, my land, my car, whatever I own. We all getting up and we moving over to Goshen. And that's where I'm going to live out the rest of my life is on the Goshen. Under the blessings and the divine protection of God. Man, I hope you get that this morning. I hope you hold on to it. I hope you tell God, God, I got it. God, I got it. I'm not letting this go. I hope you share this with somebody. I hope you tell them, listen, come on, get up. We got, we got to hear what God is saying because so many times the enemy comes and when you hear things like inflation, gas prices, it makes you want to go somewhere and sit in a corner and say things are getting bad. Things are getting worse. Crime is increasing. That's the, mo the, the so important to the body of Christ because when you see crime increasing, when you see premature death, when you see all this stuff happening. It's the remnant of God who believe God, trust God, obey God is going to move to Goshen. It's not for those that live raggedy lives. We can't live raggedy lives and take the blessings of God. We can't do it. It's for the remnant of people that believe God, walk in obedience to God. He has to show you off. He has to show you strong. He's got to show the world. I have a people that love me, obey me, and because they obey me, I've got to say what I've said. I've got to do what I do. And I've got to pr uh, reveal their promises, reveal their dreams, reveal everything that I promised them. That's what God is doing in the midst of COVID. Look how he kept you. Look how he provided. Look how he made a way. And now here is again. And I kept telling them this thing is not over. 
Here we're now in the highest inflation and people want to panic again. Why are you panicking? We just came through COVID and you lived. You survived. Now here is the other part of it. We celebrated Pentecost, the greatest move in the church. Impeccable timing. God waited for Pentecost to be over. To say to us now, there is a new sound in your life. I don't want no complaining. I don't want no murmuring. I don't want no fussing. I don't want no fighting. I want you now to declare the new sound of Pentecost, the new sound of breakthrough. After Pentecost, there is life. You don't come to Pentecost and just come out speaking in tongues. You come out with a new sound, with a new agenda, with a new living, a new life, more. You don't come out of Pentecost just any kind of way. You come out of Pentecost with power, with authority to pick up your family, move to Goshen, live your best life. Let the enemy be mad. Let folks be mad. It doesn't matter. God has a remnant that will serve him. God has a remnant that is understanding how God shifts that sound in your life. My God, what God did in our services last week, the move of God, the presence of God, the, the breakthrough of God, the spirit of God, the, the divine connection of God. And God is saying to you today, now you have a choice. You can stay where you are or you can pick up your family and let's go to Goshen. Let's go to that place of restoration, redemption, family, the best of the best. The divine connections, the divine protection, and the healing presence of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom. There's wisdom. There's a new sound of wisdom. God is going to give you wisdom to increase. God is going to give you wisdom to make the necessary changes. You've been asking God to open the doors. He cannot open the doors if you're not prepared. If, if you're not in the word of God, you're not studying the word of God, he will not open the doors because you will look foolish. But you cannot get up unprepared to teach the word of God, to be accountable. You've got to be prepared for God to open the doors for you. This is not the time to try to figure it out. This is the time for us to move into what God has called us to do. And God said to tell you, I am going to give you wisdom on who to connect to, what to do. Listen, get an evangelistic spirit on you. Invite people, talk to people, embrace them, tell them, come on to the house of God. God wants you. Bring them into the house of God and watch God blesses you with wisdom and revelation knowledge. For this season of our lives. Listen, I can't wait for the testimonies. I'm a living testimony. I'm a li This week, I'm a living testimony of what God can do. He's an amazing, 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 amazing father. And I said to God, I believe it was about Wednesday. I said to God, I'm picking up my family, picking up my home, my church, everything that I own. And I'm moving to Goshen. I heard you, God. It's, a, it's, not, it's not a physical place for you today. It's a spiritual and mental place that you say, God, know that I know that there's more that you have for me. I refuse to settle for less and lack when you have called me to be increased, to multiply, to live my best life, to live at the top and not at the bottom. God, why am I settling? Why do I feel I need to suffer when you have called me to be the best of the best and to live the best? Why am I allowing people? Why am I settling for a place in life that you never called me to? Why have I settled for lack when there is more? Why am I sitting down and allowing myself to cry over things that you never wanted me to cry over? Why am I feeling like I'm alone and there's nobody when you have people that you have divinely called me to connect to? I want you to get this this morning. I want you to get this because I want you to go live your best life. I want you to say to yourself today, me and everything that I have is moving to Goshen. And let me tell you something. You got to change your mindset in Goshen. You got to change your mindset. Because one of the things that happens, I want you to see this. When they got to Goshen, the, the people of Egypt never ate at the table with shepherds. 
They felt they were unclean. They felt that they didn't, you know, have it together. So they couldn't, even when they were at in Egypt, they never sat together to eat. Don't be surprised who will not sit at the table with you. I want you to get that. Everyone will not celebrate this next move of God in your life. Everyone will not celebrate your Goshen move. To them, you're talking crazy. To them, what's that all about? Here they go again, them Christians. But I want you to understand, it's not for everybody. Everybody will not receive this. Everybody will not believe it. Everybody will not even want it. Because to them, it's a story. But when the Spirit of God hits my belly the way this thing hits my belly this week, I know when God is up to something. And all God said to me, What's after Pentecost? Okay, you had Pentecost and you spoke in tongues and you got empowered. But it, there should not there be a new move of God after Pentecost? And I said, okay, God. He said, now, here it is. Pick up your family and move to Goshen. Everything I own is going to Goshen. I ain't leaving nothing behind. My children, my grandchildren, come on. We're going on to the spirit of Goshen. Because it's time for us to see the harvest. It's time for us to do not ignore the voice of God in this season regarding connections. That's something critical that I have to tell you. Because sometimes the people you could connect to don't look like what you think they ought to look like. But you got to trust God. There are people that God has divinely connected to you to bring favor and increase into your life. Write it somewhere. Put it somewhere, all of you. Listen, if you're going to do that, send me up a heart. I need to know you're going to obey this. You are going to put Goshen somewhere in your house, on your refrigerator, in your journal, wherever you're going to put it. We live in Goshen. And what does that re represent? Blessings increase the favor of God, the connections of God, the protection of God, the healing of God, the best of God, and the restoration power of God. That's what Goshen represents. That's the sound after Pentecost. That's what you are waiting for. The Bible says at the time of Pentecost, there was a sound. The sound represented the next move of God. And the next move of God is the family of God living in Goshen. Listen, I hope you believe it. I hope you stand on it. And listen, those of you that are preachers, go research it, build on it. I'm doing my research. I ain't not, I'm not letting this go. I know I'm going to preach it sometime this month. I don't know how God's going to do this, but this Goshen is not letting me go. If you believe it, I want you to plant a seed today. I want you to ask God right now, what seed can you plant? You can go to Dollar Sign Jubilee 200 and plant the seed. I, wanted to, I want you to call it your Goshen seed. It's the seed. That I am standing in the gap with God right now and saying, God, this is it for me. This is what I'm doing. I'm moving my family to Goshen. Dollar sign, Jubilee 200. I'll post it at the end. You go and you leave your seed. Or you, if you don't have a, a cash app, you can call 412-609-0000. And you can call us and we can and put it on your credit card or whatever you want to do. Or debit card, whatever. And you can give a seed. I want you to call it your Goshen seed. A seed of change. Something in my life has shifted today. And I am going to plant a seed that, that, that just says to God, I've built an altar at Goshen. I'm going to Goshen. And this is a new season and a new time in my life. Thank you so much for joining me. Those of you that are Jubilee, you can bring your Goshen seed tomorrow, whatever you want to do, but name it. And I believe I'll be back ministering at the end of the month. I'm going to talk about Goshen even more. It's so much more to it, but I can't do it in this 30 minutes and pray and try to get it in. But I want you to do your research on it. Get your study Bible. Go and find out about Goshen. Put it in your house. Speak it over your family. Speak it over your church. Get ready to see a season that is unprecedented because according to the world, we're in tough times, hard times. But according to the word of God, I have just moved to Goshen. God bless you. It's going to be good. He's a good God. 
and an amazing father. Have a great weekend, everybody. If you don't have a church home, come visit us tomorrow morning at Jubilee 1030. Come. If you have a church home, go support your pastors and your church. Be the best person you can be in your church and support them. If you want to come and visit us tomorrow, please feel to come and visit us tomorrow morning, 1030 at Jubilee, 200 Center, New Texas Road, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Listen, plant that seed. Dollar sign Jubilee 200 or you can call, but get that seed in the ground and call it Goshen. It's my seed of change. My life has just shifted. I am on a new trajectory. I'm going somewhere I've never been before. And I'm about to do things I've never done before. God bless you, everyone. Share this with someone.